Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society, he has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now! Here are your hosts, Craig and Cam, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information? Hey folks, and hey, how we doing? It's Craig here from Tiki Central Canada, and I'll be your bar- bar- I'll be your bu- 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 Barracuda. I'll be your Barracuda. <laughs> I'll Bar- be your uh, be- Bar- Barracuda. Barracuda. <laughs> bum, ba- dum, ba- dum, bum. <laughs> I'll be your bartender, your mixologist, and hopefully information for the hour. Hopefully. Oh, there we go. Hey, and there's my co-host, <laughs> always poking her head in, going, "Hi, Craig. How are we doing today? Hi." And what have we been doing lately? You've been traveling a lot, right? Where is the last trip you went to? How about we do that? Where, where was the last place you went to? Europe. Europe. What did you do in Europe? Italy and Germany. Awesome. Nice. It was pretty cool. There you go. Get some real food. I definitely, definitely love the food, and I don't miss the jet lag at all. Yeah, because exactly, because the last time we did the show, you were pretty jet lagged. Oh my God. You I was tired. like falling. You're falling, falling over. I don't usually get jet lag though. I just stay up for like That's a... Justin. He's the same way. I just, just stay up. I just stay it is. up for like 12 hours. And then you what? You just crash for eight hours and then you're back to normal again? Yeah. The clock's just... kind of readjusted? Yeah. I oh, can't okay, do that. Okay, yeah. And by the way, the other <laughs> voice you did hear, she was Mark's voice. Mark is going to help <laughs> us out today because we're doing an episode on Black Tot Day. So, of course, we had to bring our tiki expert in, Mark. How are we doing, Mark? We're doing great. Awesome. You're not uh, jet lagged, are you? You're okay? No, I'm pretty good. I okay. Dr- I drive. He drives and everywhere he goes. And I stay, I stay within the same uh, time zone. Time zone, I'd say yes. So what <laughs> are we that talking <laughs> about today, Craig? So today we're going to be talking about Nelson's Blood. That's the cocktail we're going to be doing today. Oh, good, because the, the listeners are probably thinking we're talking about are sleep schedules. Are we talking schedules. about sleep schedules here? Yeah. Is this a sleep uh, therapy session or yeah. something? Yeah, exactly. They're, ta- yeah. they're thinking that we're not talking For about it. For all you people out there who had jet lag, please listen to the rest of the show. You'll the be definitely Lord. fall asleep. Lord have mercy. Nelson's Blood. Nelson's Blood. Yes, huh. I know. Hey, what a name for a drink. That, but we'll that get into weird. detail why it's called that in a second there. I want to know. I really want to know. Will you tell me how it started? Yeah, so this drink actually is on the Pooser's Rum website. Hmm. And what's the connection between Pooser's and the drink? So this drink actually can only be created with Pooser's Rum. Now, Pooser's Rum is a British Navy rum. That's actually been available to the public since 1979. Okay, and it, it was created in 1979? Uh, no, actually, it's been around actually since 1655. What it is is that the British Navy was actually giving out rations on their ship to the sailors. And so after the victory in the battle with Jamaica in 1655, the rum was issued to the British Navy on a daily basis. And so it was not offered to the general public. It was only available to the British Navy. And why Poosers? What, why that name? So Poosers is a position on a Navy ship that actually serves the rations of rum daily to the crew. And uh, it was actually called the Pursers. So P-U-R-S-E-R. So basically it was a lieutenant on the ship. He, basically he was in charge of supplies. And he had a purse on. <laughs> yeah. So he's That's a purser. That's his high heels and his wig. No, he had a purse <laughs> with all the booze in it. No, no. So No, no. To help it was him a, carry. It was, it was a cask, actually. I, I'm with her. There you go. <laughs> Oh my God! Are you actually siding with me this time? Well, I, oh, I, I think I think it would be better to have a purse than. Of course, uh, than carry it carry on your on hands, a giant right? Cask, yeah. Eh? yeah, yeah. Come on, put it in a purse and, like, and take it out. Yeah. You know, on, on use your... your head. Yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah, we don't want Jolt a cask of rum. We just want a purse of rum. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me try to find my keys. Oh God! Exactly. Nothing but rum in here. Jeez. Okay, so then tell us the real story. So, so it became poosers because what they didn't know how to say purser, or because I think eventually the R got just was like a silent R, right? I think in some way, Mark, I guess we could figure, yeah, maybe it was an accent thing, I yeah, know, it was an exactly, accent. Like, like maybe a British accent, like pisses, <laughs> and they're like, oh, I mean, poosers, yeah, yeah, passes, <laughs> <laughs> please pass the passes. <laughs> You like that? It was good. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so, okay. So, 
do the pursers still exist in ships and stuff? So no, actually what ended up happening was that the ration stopped in July 31st, 1970. So they stopped rationing at the rum. So he actually didn't need that position anymore. And that's what's actually called Black Tot Day. The the fact that they rationed. No, they stopped, stopped rationing, rationing okay. out. They called it Black Tot Day. And that's when rum was stopped being portioned out to the sailors. So why did it stop? Well, the Navy ships were getting more and more technical. And the reason why the ration started off in the first place is because back then the journeys across the ocean or even in the Caribbean were very long and very harsh. So there was reasons that they would give them the rum is to kind of to deal with all the elements they were going to be dealing with. Basically, uh, if you're drunk, it's easier to go through hardship. Exactly. Yeah. So we talked about, remember before, about liquid courage. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, liquid gin was actually rationed out to the military. Prior to the war. Prior to a war. So then they actually would have courage to go fight in a battle. So it's the same sort of process. It's, it's a like numbing a, process. It's basically. a numbing yeah. process. Okay. In other words, we're going to get you drunk just so you can hang around. Okay. So what what is this recipe? And um, I really like the cool facts, by the way. Uh, I actually want to know now who's What's Nelson. In this? Who is Nelson, and why are we drinking his blood? <laughs> so let's go. Because I the... actually did today. I drank Nelson's blood. Yeah, you drank blood. this one. You, you drank, drank this one. Yes, you did. So you did I would drink like Nelson's to know blood. why am I drinking, drinking his blood? His blood. <laughs> and why did I not? Am I a vampire now? <laughs> Very confused. And where is my Tom Cruise if I'm a vampire? <laughs> it's, oh, sure. There always has to be some hunk involved, right? Exactly. Duh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So let's go through that. So, of course, we're going to be using Pooser's Rum. Uh, the one actually on the website is Pooser's Gunpowder Proof, in quotations, rum. Two ounces of that. And we'll explain that in a second. Okay. Two ounces of cranberry juice. One ounce of orange juice. So you're going tart to sweet. Okay. One ounce of lime juice. Tart again. Half ounce of simple syrup, sweet again, and a dash of bitters. Okay. And you actually tried this drink out, so you did the face. Yeah, I did the face. So did Norma, <laughs> but Mark liked Mark it. Mark liked it. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's it's boozy. Booze, hmm. It's very booze forward, for sure, yes. Exactly, okay. Yeah. And so explain the gunpowder situation. So what it was is that back then, the Pooses Rome that they had on the British Navy ships were rationed out. And the way they could prove that actually was the right ration of rum was they would do is add gunpowder to it and then light it. And if it actually lit, smoked, or even a certain color of flame would prove that actually that it was of proof. And um, that's actually how the, we got the word proof today. Oh, cool. Yes. So are you going to explain to us how to make this drink? Sure. So what you're going to do is you're going to combine all the ingredients into a cocktail shaker. You're going to shake it well. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake your, your booty. booty. Shake your boozy. Shake your boozy. Uh, and then straight into a glass of ice and serve. Okay, cool. And again, I would really like to know, why am I drinking Nelson? Nelson's blood. So Admiral Nelson was a guy, a uh, British, obviously, Navy officer in the 1700s that actually lost his life during a battle here in the colony. Okay, so basically he's... Ah, this he's, question was on a trivia. Yes, now you're starting to remember now. And what ended up was that his, according to his wishes... That his life would be, sorry, his body would be preserved, be transported back to England. And to preserve it, what they would do is put him into a cask of Pooser's rum. Oh my God, don't, please don't finish that sentence. To preserve him so his body could be buried back in England. Oh, So ew. guess what? The journey took a little longer than they thought. Oh, man, this is taking a long time to get back. The rum ran out. And then also the sailors were like, wow, we've got no rum. So what do we do now? Well, hey, how about we drill a hole into the cask over there and start drinking the rum over that? Oh, my God. So they actually drank the rum that was actually in the cask. With the decomposing guy in, in there. there. Ew. And by the time they got back to England, the cask was completely empty. And the only thing left in there was Nelson's pickled body that remained. And so Ew. sometimes Pooser's rum actually is known as Nelson's blood. So that's the connection between Nelson's blood, the cocktail, and Pooser's. Okay, so now I have a fun question for both of you. Yes. What what part of Nelson do you think would symbolize the cranberry juice? Which part of Nelson you think symbolizes the orange juice, the lime juice, and the simple syrup, and oh. the, the bitters? I guess if you, if you combine them together, you kind of get that reddish. And actually, the, we'll have a picture of the cocktail. It is actually a reddish hue. Okay. It is kind of blood colored in some perspective. Because seriously, you're <laughs> drinking parts of a man with booze. That's from right. a casket. That's right. Right? Well, it's, it, you're making it, it sound like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Because, like, you know, the market would be right up for this. Like, you know, hey, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tap me in there. Yeah, you, you have to remember that these guys drank a lot of rum. So you think that they didn't even notice that they were drinking? Like, Oh, they knew that they were doing. The dude's blood mixed it was, in? It probably was the last rum on board. Yeah, because don't forget also, too, that you might not be able to see land. And so they're going, well, I don't know how much longer it's going to be before we actually do get to land. So I don't care and enough? At this point, I, I need to... some rum. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the cleanest thing on the ship, though. True, because of the alcohol, I agree. Yeah. The alcohol content kept it clean. Pre- well preserved. Yes. He was uh, well preserved on the way there, yes. Still, there go, yeah. still, still. It's I, blood. Know, I know, I know. Well, blood. that's why it's called Nelson's Blood now. Blood. I know. Well, now we understand why vampires like ships. They do? I didn't know that. How do vampires like ships? I didn't know. I don't know. Every single Inquiring vampire movie that I see, there's like. Really? They, they I show see them on land. The vampires, you know, getting somewhere with the ship or something because it's way back then. I don't know. Like, you usually see them in a castle. Maybe I'm just, yeah, maybe I'm just watching too much of like vampire diaries, you know, that's like for teens. Sure. So all the movies we're suggesting, you're not watching those. No, they, this is a series, <laughs> though. It's a series. <laughs> it's the vampire diaries, the originals. Ah, it's a whole okay. other thing. It's, yeah. Now, what channel is that on? I don't know. I watch it on um, American Netflix. Oh, okay. Netflix. There you go. American Netflix. It's, yes, I know how she emphasizes that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Because it, sure. yeah. yeah no, don't. it is different. There is a difference between oh, American very, Netflix very. and Canadian oh, yeah. Netflix. And Brazilian and European. Wait, wait. There's a Brazilian Netflix? Of course. There's Netflix everywhere, Craig. What do you think we I are? Amazon? We think we have pet monkeys? <laughs> of course we have Netflix, dude. You think we don't have Wi Fi in Brazil? You don't have pet monkeys? <laughs> no. <laughs> nor pet snakes, oh. nor do we do Tarzan jungle shit. Well, I know no. you didn't do that. You're, well, doing, too much, you you're doing too much beach volleyball for that. I thought you guys had beach, but I thought you guys had, like, yeah, pet monkeys, no? Yeah. No, and, and we do not, you I'm, know, I'm disappointed now. go across the town in our little Damn. boat canoes or anything. No, I was going to go on not... ex- I was gonna go on an excursion looking for pet monkeys. No, trust me, there's a lot of Americans that that actually think that I cross my town on a canoe because they think that Brazil is a huge Amazon. That's yeah. it. Yeah. They don't realize that there's a 23 well, million people city. It's the same the thing when I live when I moved out of the states. You know, in the states, they actually think that we all uh, no, and that there's obviously people more informed. But there were actually some Americans that thought like apparently we have skis all the time up here. Like we ski. Year round, apparently. I wish we don't. We don't I ski really year wish. round. No, because they think we still live in igloos and the snow year oh round. Oh my god, we should. No, <laughs> no. Let's go live in an igloo. <laughs> That's probably very refreshing. How did we get to Black Tot today? How did this start? So let's go through some significant dates that could have start the whole ball rolling, right? Okay. So 1655, way back then. Yes. Uh, rum was actually introduced first on the Royal Navy ships uh, shortly after the invasion of Jamaica. Okay. So obviously this is where they got their supplies from. They this got is from when Jamaica. They start Jamaica the rum. Whole party of you know, let's ganja rush. Ganja man, ganja. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible accent. I know. I know. The uh, joke wasn't too good either, but okay. No, it was awful. I <laughs> probably will pop that out. Okay. Dad joke. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. I should be. So we go. Let's go fast forward to 1740. Admiral Vernon ordered that the daily ration of rum to be mixed with water. So when that pop was that, he was actually the in charge of the British Navy, and he noticed that lots of things were not happening on a ship. Like things were being done and completed. Some sailors would actually would hold on to the rations for a few days and then also drink it in one shot and get drunk and pass out. So they couldn't do their tasks. So he said, that's it. We're going to mix it with water. And it was actually was named Grog. It was named Grog because Vernon's nickname at the time was Old Grogum because the coat that he wore was made out of Grogum cloth, which is actually kind of like a canvas leathery material. Oh, I see. Yeah. So now we know you've actually heard the word Navy Grog. We've probably heard that, that term before, right? Yeah. So in 1823, well, the rum is still too strong, so they they cut it in half again. And in 1850, again. So basically the ration is getting more and more watered down as we go. Well, it got to a point, July 31st, 1970, that they said, that's it. No more. The daily rations will be abolished. And this is what's known as Black Tot Day. Good, good, because, you know, again, drinking and driving doesn't really work, so why do you have to work on a ship? Exactly. It kind of defeated its purpose now. It's not yeah. like you're doing it to survive on a ship, it's just because you want to drink. So they get out. The drinking rum all day, I can totally understand, because people will always find a reason to drink all day. Oh, yeah, of course. Any excuse is an excuse, yep. if we stop and think about it. Yeah. I'm moody today, aren't I? No. <laughs> you're... 
It's the I jet, think, jet lag. It's a jet lag. I think I'm a bit moody. Like I'm I'm just bitching and everything we're saying here. I'm usually more <laughs> funny. Today I'm actually like eh, eh, Maybe this eh. is maybe this is her true colors. No, no. <laughs> See, I told you I'm a bitch. No, seriously. I, I think I'm a bit moody. Oh. Huh. Mm. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Okay, if you guys hear snoring, it's me. <laughs> I just my face fell on the microphone. Folks, uh, it's Paul's all gonna good. take a nap in the corner there of the <laughs> that, studio. Okay, <laughs> that, that funk that you hear. That's that's that's, that's Polly hitting the floor. <laughs> Give me a casket of rum so I can yeah. take a nap. We'll preserve you in some rum. How's please that? Do, yeah, please, go. please. Yes. To give you an idea, the um, the original rum ration wasn't rum; it was actually beer, and they had a daily ration of a gallon. Wow. Of beer. That that seems like a lot. It, it does. How many yeah. gallons go in our car? 75. No, no, that's liters. No, no, no. That's liters. That's liters. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're, getting about like 40, 12, right? you're getting about 12, 15 gallons, oh, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It's even more than I was thinking. Well, a gallon of milk. Like, you know, if you go down the stage and you get like a milk cart, that's a gallon of milk. Oh, my God. That, that's that's pretty pretty lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So why did, why did they go from beer to rum? I and mean, you can well, explain why. Well, beer was, first of all, it took up a lot of room to have all these beer kegs. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. There. And also beer could go bad. Oh. And you can't have people not getting their ration or their slash tot. God no, God no, no. Oh, God no. But then they were at, if they didn't have beer, they could have wine okay. or spirits. Yeah, right. Depending on where they were in the world. And so, because of the Caribbean, rum was actually flourished. It was everywhere. Yeah, right. So it was just easier to transport it. Also, too, rum. The cool thing about rum is, see, so beer. See, example, like the beer is on the on the ship, and it's a long journey. Well, beer doesn't age well. It goes bad. It goes sour. Right. It gets yeah. sick. Whatever. Rum actually gets better with age. And actually, when you put it into a cask, like a, a barrel, yeah, that gets better in, in taste and in quality. Oh, so yeah. is there any uh, more factors you want to put into their uh, Well, we Mr. were Mark? talking about the gunpowder mm -hmm. earlier. Oh, yeah. And what it is, the sailors would prove what strength it was by doing the gunpowder. Okay. You would pour the uh, gunpowder or rum on the gunpowder, whatever. And if it smoked, it was a certain proof okay yeah. and that's where we get this now instead of abv or alcohol by volume so for instance the uh, what do we got here so the rum was at least 57 percent abv which would be a hundred proof yeah okay so like and that would light and yeah. that would light so they would that's what they would need the reason it was also doing that was because in the 1500s the governments would use this exact same method to see what level of alcohol it was for taxation purposes uh... no way yeah, because I mean, think of it, liquor's taxed like heavy. It's heavy duty taxed. Like, especially here in Ontario, our liquor is being taxed great. Uh, it's it's heavy. Yeah, for sure. So they would tax it based on the high alcohol. Ah, there we go. Interesting, there my friend. Go. There you go. Very and interesting. So some cool facts about Black Tot Day. Hmm. There we and, go. And, yes, and? different countries had different tots. Oh. Ah, so okay, I didn't know this. Which, yeah. let's see, yeah. All right. The uh, United States Navy, uh, the daily ration was one half U.S. pint, or which is 240 mils or eight ounces uh, of distilled spirits. Okay. Until 1842. Okay. Uh, and it was reduced to one gill. What's a gill? 120 mils or four ounces. So that, four that's ounces. pretty little. That's, yeah. not, that's not a lot for a yeah. whole day. You think about it, yeah. And then that only lasted uh, 20 years and it was abolished in 1862. Yeah, it seems like the British Navy hanged on to the longest day, eh? like yeah. 1970. That's that's recent. Yeah. It's the Europeans. They still mm. let us smoke everywhere, imagine. Yeah, yeah we got a drink too. Hey, yeah, there you go. Exactly. The Royal Australian Navy never issued a rum ration. Their sailors uh. were entitled to the rum ration when they were on the Royal Navy ships until 1921. Uh, the Royal Canadian Navy abolished the rum ration in 1972. And the Royal New Zealand Navy, God bless their souls, abolished the practice in 1990. Just recently, wow! New Zealand, yeah. Oh my god! They're just like the year ah. my brother, my little brother was born in 1990. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, and the drunken uh, sailors are like, damn. And I saw a photo online of a Captain Morgan rum from Waterloo, Ontario, where the distillers for the quote unquote Royal Canadian Navy rum. Oh, there you go. That's very cool. Now Black Tot Day in England when they put the gavel down. There's a whole bunch of that original rum that was destined for the ships was put in storage. Yes. And a company called Specialty Drinks Limited got it all. And they, you can buy some of that rum. The no original from, yeah. that, from that time of... I wonder what it costs, though. It's got to be figuring up there. Right? It's 43.3%. Uh, it's a 70 mil bottle. 
1048 Canadian dollars a bottle. Woo! You think it might be worth it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the guy that drank a lot of rum. Okay, He's and this is a lot. rum from 1970? Yeah, it would have been the it was been the, it would have yeah. been the stock left over from the last black Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which oh, is historically, 50, historically. By the way, there's also another rum. another cool fact in my research. So there was a videos like in Gossing Rum. So Gossing Rum, where they make it, which is in Bermuda, they do Black Tot Day. And on a ship, they actually do. They drop a bottle of rum every year overboard. Now, here's a cool fact, because I'm watching the video and I'm like, why is there a string? There's a string on the bottle. So he throws the bottle overboard and there's a string on it. So he tells all the people on the boat, apparently it's illegal to drop any bottles in the ocean that's littering so basically he has to have it on a string so he can bring it back to life and that's what he says he goes we're bringing the rum back to life on the boat and then they open it up and everyone drinks the rum interesting little fact yeah. so if you're in the caribbean you can't do like you know remember the you've heard the police song message in a bottle yeah like if you're like say you're you know you're stranded on an island and you want to like put a little message in a bottle well apparently it's illegal to put a bottle in the ocean in the caribbean it is littering i know but i'm just saying it's like there's no more Message in a bottle. It huh. doesn't exist. Well, if you if you find a bottle in an island and you're stranded, you're lucky. Then you do send it. But I guess, you know, if you're a normal person in the 2000s. Well, if you're stranded on an island, are you really worried about the law? Yeah. You're if not. Anybody, like, That's what sure, I'm saying. Come ahead. Arrest me. Find me, please. Then you're just lucky <laughs> if you find a bottle. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to play my five desert island records without any power or record player. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we have to ask the question because remember this, and you remember in high school, in your public school, and there's like, you know, what things do you bring to a desert island if you were like a desert on an island? What's the one thing that you had to bring to a desert island? Air conditioning. Paula, you had to bring air conditioning? You're on an island, you're outside. Exactly. That's, I need to find somewhere to put in my air conditioning. I don't want to be hot all the time. Well, you'd have to build a hut first, I guess. And oh, then Lord. The air okay, so then I have to I have to bring someone that is very, very good at... No, no, no. We're talking an item. So if you had to bring in one item to the... Uh, to, 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 say you're getting... You know you'd be going to be stranded on an island and you, for some reason you had one item you can bring with you, what would it be? Oh, my God. That No, go first. <laughs> Mark? A yacht. <laughs> so you can get off the island very right. good very good idea then i'll bring a chopper <laughs> it can dock on his in his yacht or something <laughs> what about you i have the dinghy attached to mark's yacht wait what a dinghy. I'd, I'd, dinghy. I'd have a oh. boat attached to his oh. yacht <laughs> i'm not paying for the gas screw that crap let him pay for the gas <laughs> And, now, and realistically, if, if we can't take flying or items to get out of the island, what would you bring to stay stranded there? A tent. Really? That's it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Some sort of shelter of some kind. I don't yeah. want to have to build that stuff. I've seen too many episodes of Gilligan's Island. I couldn't live like that. <laughs> well, Blue Lagoon seems good. I think it, I, I actually would have the yeah, radio. Okay. I would have the radio because then you can actually, like you do remember Gilligan's Island, they actually yeah. found a way to charge the batteries. Oh, yeah. So the, I would have the radio. I would have the radio. That's what I'd have. Coconuts. Yeah. yeah. Just coconuts. I should probably bring something very sharp and pointy to kill myself. <laughs> Ow. Oh. What are you, like Jack Sparrow with the one shot left over? Is yeah, that it? Yeah. Probably. Because cause I, I would be helpless in a place Jack, like that. Do you remember I don't that know I how didn't... to do anything. I wouldn't be able to build a hut. I wouldn't even be able to open a freaking coconut to drink out of it. Without breaking a nail sure and hurting you were myself, you'd find some way to open up a coconut. I'm, I'm. Uh, it's just easier to use the last bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Why bother? Like, uh, this is too much work. Yeah, it is too I'm much just work. Gonna finish it off. I'm folks. too lazy. <laughs> so yeah, I guess just something to finish it off with, there or my AC. Okay, so what terms back then were used on these ships? Tell us more. Like, like the grog one like that you were we talking about. about. Yep. Okay, so let's Are do some more? other ones. So it was grog tub. Okay. And what that was was the oak cask that they would use to place all their rum rations for the day. And on the side of the cask was the brass letters, the king, God bless him, or queen, God bless her. Oh, that's cute. Yes. Okay, more. I want more. I like sure. those. So let's go through this one, next one here. So here's some words, and then you can tell me what you think. Wet, sipper, gulper, and big swallow. So what do you think those are? Mm, that's hard. Well, wet usually is just wet. Right? I, yeah. I don't know. Is there like a, another? I don't know. Um, sipper maybe is the person that tries. 
Tries out the room, maybe. Room. Okay, see if it's maybe of quality. Okay. But then Gulper and Big Swallow, like, those two are, like, they're taking really those big... Those guys are taking away other people's rations. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking more of the actual swallowing process. Like, it's a big gulp. Right. Or swallowing, like, everything at once. I don't know. Yeah. Like... Okay, so let's go through it. So basically what it was is that rum actually had a value. It was kind of like a currency on these ships. Okay. And so what would happen is they say, example, okay, me and you are sailors on the ship. And you're like, hey, Craig, I want you to take care of my chores today. I'm really not feeling the greatest, but I need you to take care of my chores. need to be done. These tasks need to be done by the end of the day. No problem. Well, that currency of rum also was like basically the value. So it actually had different values to it. I would be rich in that boat. Yeah. I would I'd be, be a out. millionaire. <laughs> be I'm like, you know what? Everyone <laughs> would be my baby. <laughs> <laughs> that word. Anyway. I like uh, it. So one currency is called wet, which just is basically enough rum to wet your lips and cover them with rum. A sipper, it basically is just that, just a sip. One sip, one sip only. A gulper is basically, yep, one gulp of my ration of rum. So basically, these are all oh. different parts of my ration of rum that I'm giving to you. So it is the swallowing process. And then the big so, okay. swallow basically means you take the entire... The other person's whole You get whole the other thing. person's whole portion That's for the day. That's a big the favor right there. Another tort. That tort. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to start getting people to big swallows. <laughs> I need favors. <laughs> you two really have a black mind. You know that? <laughs> It's just dark oh, what come goes on. in there. It was you just you walked right into that you one. Two you two are just mean. You walked into that one. There mean. We go. <laughs> I never said anything. I know. No, but your face is definitely. Neither of you did. <laughs> it, it was the the yeah. noises that you made, <laughs> and he makes the faces always. Uh, yeah. The, I make the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay, so the next term we're going to uh, go through is splice the main brace. So splice the main brace was the longest line on a sailboat. And what would happen is that in a common a battle, that's the part that you would aim for, like try to hit and, and to knock out because it was the main sail for the boat. So basically as soon as the sail, that main sail was knocked out, the boat would be inoperative. It couldn't move, couldn't maneuver, sail away. It wouldn't be able to sail away. So to prepare it was very, very difficult because, like I said, it ran the entire length of the ship, this main this main line. Mm -hmm. And so it actually was running through blocks. So it wasn't like you could just simply like just tie a knot, like take the two ends and tie a knot because it had, actually would have to run through a block. So you would actually have to splice it and like put it together. And so... That is how, uh, that's where the splice the main braces means. So basically you're putting back together the main line that runs the, the main sh sail to the ship. Oh, Actually, okay. I understood oh. that it was to break the main brace to splice it. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're, you're the guy that repairs it. So basically that would be a very difficult job. It usually would, it would be assigned to a senior officer to go repair the main, the main brace or the main sail during battle. Because sometimes you couldn't wait till battle's over because you wouldn't be able to maneuver. So you would have to actually refuse to go up there and, and repair it. Yeah. Now, this actually, this phrase actually means something completely different now. So when there's a celebration on a British Navy boat, split the main brace actually is that everyone on that occasion gets a ration of rum for that occasion, that celebration. Oh, cool. Yes. So it has a different meaning today than it did back then. Okay, another one for you to giggle now. Okay. Tell so me what that one the means. The next one is suck the monkey. Hmm. You wonder what that one means? Yeah, what does it mean? So what it was is that when sailors would dock or land, um, finally get back on land, they would do is they'd find rum. Now, it was illegal because you were getting rations of rum already on the boat to bring rum back onto the boat. So what they would do is they would find some coconuts ashore, drill some holes into them or pound holes into them, drain the coconuts and then put rum back into them, pour rum into the coconuts and then cap them and then bring them back on board. So there was basically illegal rum that you would bring on board. Nice. I I, I have heard this name though before. Yeah, Where actually, have I heard it? We actually have it on our tiki menu for the main bar. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. <laughs> so why do you call it Splice the Monkey? Or so, suck, suck, the suck the Monkey. Suck the Monkey. You want to put them together. Yeah. Yeah. So Suck the Monkey, the reason why we, we did is that I was reading this information, this is about uh, two years ago, and we're on a beach, and I was telling Norma the, the, the story about like why it's called Suck the Monkey, and she said, found it so fascinating. She's like, well, that's got to be a name for a drink. And literally, I kid you not, right on the beach, within five minutes, first time, actually created the drink in her head and this told me what was going to be in it. 
<laughs> and you made it when you got a chance and so it was good? So we came back home and I mixed it. took a couple of uh, versions of it to finally get the right correct, right proportion. But yeah, we actually made this recipe. Now it's called Suck the Monkey, which is on our Tiki Bar menu. Oh, I want to try that one. I, I, yes. I trust Norma's taste. Yeah, exactly. She I has the same taste her. as you. Yep. So yeah, you go. Yep. So the recipe for this is, and we'll actually have this for on the website. For Suck the Monkey. For Suck the Monkey. Okay. Is an ounce and a half of coconut rum. A half ounce of banana liqueur, two ounces of pineapple juice. I can't try it. And one ounce of cream to coconut. No, you've had pineapple juice before in one of my oh, drinks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then one ounce of cream to coconut. Yeah, so you can see it's very sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not a... Um, if nice. you're looking for a booze four drink, it's not a booze four drink for sure. It's not too banana y, too. No, because she, she's not a fan of banana. So I'm we always, either. so that's me. So we toned down the banana. First it was one ounce, and then she's like, no, no, it's too much banana. I don't like banana. So then we toned it down to a half an ounce. And it was just the right amount that you actually just get a hint of banana, but you don't actually get the okay. full force of banana. Yeah, because it, it sounds very tropical and very delicious. Very tropical. Yeah. And I'm not a big fan of banana, too. So if, if Norma says you can't sm- yeah, feel the banana... you have to try it out. I exactly, trust, yeah. Trust try it on the bar. Exactly. I trust it. And she put the banana there just because it's called Suck Monkey? No, she actually yelled out the ingredients to me. Like I said, she just kind of like, okay, here's what I think I could see when I think of like, tropical. And she just kind of... But I don't understand drinks. a person that doesn't like banana put banana in her drink. Well, she liked the hint of banana. Oh, she okay. just doesn't want it where it's like banana. Like She doesn't like anything that's got overpowering banana yeah yeah you know i don't I mean? need so it's just like the, the hint right because you think about it, when you and mark can concur this when you taste a tiki drink you're gonna get like little layers of stuff right like you're gonna mark you're gonna like yeah. you see when you drink a drink you can taste a little bit of maybe cinnamon and oh, okay there's a little bit of demero rum oh maybe there's some uh, you know vanilla in there and you're gonna get these layers and every time you sip it right in some ways it's the same thing in the drinks that you drink when you go to the tiki bars right you kind of can taste the layers in there right yeah, because I know there's a lot of drinks that Linda will not, uh, she doesn't like banana, right? And she'll see something that has banana liqueur in it or whatever, and she'll try it. It goes, oh, I can't taste the banana at all. It just, it's part of the overall taste. Interesting. Exactly, yeah. I yeah. like I like that concept. Okay, I can work yeah, with that. Yeah, so that is the uh, Suck of the Monkey. And hey, that is our show. So we did a lot of information there. Yeah, And thank you, Mark, again for coming. And of course, yes, give me some more information. He's always like an encyclopedia of information all yeah, the time. Yeah, that's true. He's always on the run, yeah. So let's tell everybody who we are. So we are www.tikicentralcanada.ca. That's all one word. By the way, I was talking to Cam. So Cam is coming back in September. Okay, that's nice. Yes. So we're going to have to put another microphone in here. <laughs> this office is getting smaller and smaller, folks. Uh, as we as we we grow big bigger, right, Mark? Yes. I'd say I'm gonna have to get we skinnier and skinnier as I yeah. go along here. Jeez. We, we need our tiki telethon to expand the operation. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> please donate to our cause. Please, <laughs> please, please. So, uh, also too, by the way, it's hilarious. So, uh, I have to say the story. Uh, so, I was at the bar with uh, Cam. Cam was at the bar, and he has a friend who listens to the show, and apparently. Norma, my girlfriend who does the travel tips, we talked about this yes. before, has a fan. <gasps> I'm her fan, so she has another fan? She has another fan. Oh so my apparently God. apparently this guy is like all like, I love all the travel tips. They're amazing. So we're on vacation. We're at the cottage and we're talking about the show. And I told her that, by the way, she had his fan and that she's, you know, he loves the travel tips. So of course Norma's like, all right, I'll do more travel tips. Oh, yay, so, fan. Yay. yay. So somewhere down the line, very soon, there will be more travel tips. I'm so <laughs> glad that this fan appeared. Did you invent that just so she would do more? No, because what it is, like, I invented the segment because she's always, when we travel, okay, she actually has a checklist of everything that we need, like weeks in advance of everything we need to put in her suitcase. And I'm just floored by like, for example, like we'll get in the plane and the first thing she hands me is wipes. It's like, here, wipe everything down. Wipe the, the seatbelt down. Wipe the, you know, the tray down. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't want to get lice. <laughs> no. No, but I'm just saying is that it seems like through our travels, she's picked up on so many different things that help out. Like, so, example, like this time, our last trip, we uh, when we went to uh, Carousel, we took pictures of our luggage. I never thought of this. But she's like, no. People Why? are saying on a blog, you take a picture of your luggage because then if you lose your luggage... It's very easy to describe it because you just show them the picture of your luggage and they go, oh, okay, that's what it looks like. Oh. Right? So, yeah, good lu- little things like really this that she's picked similar, up. Right? Yeah, so there's these things that she's picked up on, and that's what we did travel tips because she's like, yeah, I can pass this on to information on to our listeners. Please, please continue because I've already got a bunch of her tips and, and well, put especially them in since practice. you travel a lot. Yeah, yeah. Holy moly. 
<laughs> True that. Okay, so where are we going next? Where do you know where you are next? Maybe my honeymoon. That's really the next trip? No. Oh. Like <laughs> she's like, I don't know where we're going. No, no. that's no. that's a big one. <laughs> like that's an actual trip trip with planes. So what happens? Just Justin just pulls you to the airport. Like just trust me, I I'm I'll tell you where we're going no, when we get there. <laughs> here's here's what's happening. The Singapore trip got cancelled. Yes. So now uh, well I have to go back to New York anyhow. Okay. But I'm driving because yeah. it's to pick up my wedding dress. Oh congrats, yeah. by the way. Thank you. So I'm going to spend a good week in New York because I have to do the, the fitting for the dress and all right. that stuff. Right. So um, that's one of the reasons why I'm driving is so that I can drive back up with a big old gown in it. Uh, You're um, not going to drive while wearing the gown, right? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't think I could move my legs in there. Um, anyhow. Uh, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to the States again between now and the honeymoon. Right. But um, the next big trip is... Right, the first first week of October to um, Dubai you, and and Maldives uh, for the honeymoon. Okay, because you you told me you guys told me like you had, you literally had a trip set up for every month of the yeah, year so, except for November. Exactly. So, so August, Singapore was supposed to be Aug, uh, um, September then. Yeah, Singapore oh, okay. was going to be end of August, beginning of September. Oh, okay, and then the know. wedding is in end of September. Then uh, beginning of October That's we right. go, and then December is Brazil. So basically, somewhere in September, just to let you guys know, she probably won't be here for a few weeks. Yeah. She'd be kind of busy. <sighs> Getting married? Justin, you lucky bugger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's October, though. That's the honeymoon. Ah, I got you. Okay. Yeah. He's got to wait all the way to that. <laughs> it's all right. Well, <laughs> anyways, on that note... <laughs> Uh, let's tell everybody who we are. So we're okay. www.tikicentralcanada.ca. All right. Before we go, oh, oh. Where, where are you staying in Dubai? Oh, here we go. Um, at the Waldorf. Oh, not staying at the Hilton? No. There's a Trader Vic's in Dubai. Ah, oh, good to know. There I, you go. We, we can go there for sure. It, yeah. The the Waldorf is also Hilton brand. Okay. So that's why, because we, we are Hilton member type thing. Yeah. Hilton, if you want to give us that's something, right. please do. By yeah. the way, I also have Hilton points too, if you want to send oh, us out there. Look at there that. You go. See Hilton? So I'm the only one that doesn't do that. Okay, sorry. And, uh, it's the best you... thing. We, we're sure. we're getting we're getting so many free nights for our honeymoon oh, wow. just on points that yeah. it's unbelievable. And uh, New York City, you go to a place called the Polynesian. The Polynesian in New ah, York City. Yes. There you go for a tiki. Oh, absolutely. That's what you were researching on your phone right now. No, I was making sure that there was a Trader Vic's in Dubai because oh, okay. I know there's one in Saudi Arabia, there's one in UAE, yep. and all that kind of stuff. I was just checking to see where it was in Dubai. Because because um, Justin was actually re- he's pretty nervous of going to two countries that are very uh, Muslim and very prohibited of a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that's forbidden in Dubai of drinking. That's why I was surprised actually that Trader Vic's is there. But actually, you don't I mean? be because from the research that I've been doing. Um, it's forbidden for everyone that's from there. But right, if you're visiting, they have they have a, a huge tourist culture, so everything's allowed for tourists. That's gonna be a weird scenario because then you have locals who can't do certain. It's things. really not that weird because it's just because you're not you're not from the culture. But when you no, once sure. you're from yeah, that yeah. culture, you believe in that stuff, so you don't even want to try. Oh no, yeah, like example. So uh, one of my owners, actually yes. from my my bar that I work for. Uh, he's actually Lebanese, so then we every time we have a celebration, we always know like we all have champagne or we all have wine or something, whatever. And he doesn't, and it's all cool. We we get it. Like, hey, that's part of your culture, and that's the way it is. And he's actually very cool about it. He'll sit there, still be at the party. He'll still hang out with us, and he doesn't like get all, you know, offended by any way that we're drinking. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's very cool. So I guess I could sort of relate to that. Yeah. yeah so yeah. they yeah, Dubai has this whole culture that is a hundred percent for Westerners, Westerners, Westerns, Westerners. How do you say that? Westerners. Westerners. So yeah. I said it right the first time. Yeah. <sighs> Westerns or movies. Okay. So or, Westerners. or sandwiches. I don't know that sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it. It's, no. an, it's an egg sandwich. Like Ew. A, it's like an egg omelet. Type That's sandwich. why I don't know that. You don't like eggs? I love eggs, but not like yeah, you know omelet. Yeah. Yeah, you know, onions. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, Peppers. you're lo- you're Peppers. starting to lose me already. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a western air. <laughs> Give it up, Mark. Give it Toasted, up. Yeah, 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 the Toasted Western is also the name of a local band, too. Uh, but I, I will definitely tell him he will definitely want to go, and I will definitely want to go, because I I want to see this Trader Vicks. So it's on the Hilton, not in, in the Palm? It's in, in the, it's uh, in the in Dubai the Hilton. Okay. That's what I looked up. Ah, very I shall, cool. I shall try that. Well, I'll, I'll go going in there with all my Hilton points and be like, I'm going to go see Trader Vicks now. That's right. There you I'm not go. even going to use my points on you people. Wow. Because we're seeing the other one. 
Yeah. On that note. <laughs> On that note, let's let's say goodbye. All right, folks. So yes, let's uh, move on, and we'll get see you guys next episode. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Bye. See ya. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? I'm going to start getting people to big swallows. (laughs) I need favors. (laughs)